Ooh, I am a very, very happy nerd right now. GTO solvers have pretty much only been a heads up thing since, well, pretty much ever. But I recently found a tool that allows you to do GTO solves in multi-way pots, which is a game changer, especially if you play live poker or really any game that has a lot of multi-way pots. So I want to show you how to use it, hack through it together, and look at a specific hand with King Queen with you. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and no, you cannot wipe this smile off my face. I am very, very happy about this one. So let's get into it. This is a hand played at 1-2 over at Orange City. This is from vlog episode number two. If you're looking to catch up, I'll leave a link for that down in the description box, but let's get into it. All right, so in this spot, we are in the cutoff, limp under the gun, look down at King Queen of Spades, limp by under the gun plus one, I attack up to 15. Totally standard raise, obviously. Size-wise, no real reason to go much smaller nor bigger. 15 should get the job done plenty enough of the time. End up getting called by the small blind, called by the big blind as well, and both of the limpers go away. Only real information to give here is that the player in the big blind that called had previously squeezed against me, and I 4-bet and they went away, so keep that in mind. Check in the dark by the small blind, check by the big blind, and I check as well on a board of 8-6 deuce with two hearts and unfortunately no spades. So some people will look at this situation and say, well, this is a very clear and obvious check. This is a terrible texture and we have really nothing going for our hand and it's a multi-way pot, so forget it, just check behind and go from there. No problem, I'm totally in the same camp with you. But there are some people that look at this and say, well, we should be c-betting a lot of the time simply because we really have nothing going for our hand right this moment, so why not just fight for it and try to pick it up uncontested? And I get that as well. So one thing that I think is interesting is to start by looking at the solver. And again, solving in multi-way pots is very, very new and something that previously has not really been an option in the slightest. So this is very, very cool. And I want to run you through the simple three-way GTO solver so that way you can kind of see what it does. Now, when we look at this, there's a lot going on. And I've already set up the entire tree and I've set up all the parameters, so you don't have to worry about that. But essentially down here, we can run everything in. And for what it's worth, I decided to node lock player one because they did check in the dark. So I think it just makes sense to give them a 100% checking range because obviously if they're checking the dark, they do put 100% of their hands into their checking overall. Player two decides to check and what does the solver suggest that we should be betting with in this scenario? Well, we do have king, queen of spades. So if we click on that and look over here, we notice that it suggests that we be checking 100% of the time and checking is more profitable to the tune of about a dollar and change. So it is going to be the best option according to the solver overall. And for what it's worth, I can hear some of you cringing, saying, why the heck are we even talking about GTO solvers, not just in multi-way pots versus heads up pots, but why are we talking about solvers at all when we're talking about playing 1-2 live? I totally understand the point, because the GTO solver presupposes that every single person is going to be playing a GTO strategy perfectly from there on forward. And obviously, when we're talking about playing something like 1-2, or really anytime there are humans involved, perfect GTO is not going to be there. So why the heck would we even bother looking at a GTO solver or caring about running these kind of solves on your own? And my personal reason for doing so is because it gives me a starting point for understanding what a general strategy looks like in a perfectly solved scenario. That way I can start deviating from there. If you don't have a starting point model, such as a GTO model, then your deviation is based upon what? What are you even deviating from? You have no idea. You're just Saying, okay, well, I'm going to do this. Well, what are the other options available? At least the solver gives you a starting point for that kind of modeling. So in this scenario, there are two major things that I find really, really interesting here. First and foremost is kind of confirms that checking is going to be better, again, according to the model overall. The other thing that I really like to see is how often the solver is suggesting that we check versus bet. And you notice that after both players check, even a 100%, so a dark check from the player one, so the small blind, 
after player two checks and mind you the solver likes them checking a tremendous amount of the time as well you notice that the solver suggests us checking this roughly 70 percent of the time and then betting the other 30 and by the way you can click in this you can see all of the bets in green you can see all of the checks in yellow that way you can get a good idea on kind of what the overall betting strategy is looking like and just as importantly how often you should be betting versus checking i know a lot of players are trying to really get their c betting frequencies up which makes a lot of sense especially in heads up pots but in multi-way pots you're going to notice this drop off a lot of the time especially on these kind of middle-ish connected boards ones that tend to favor the preflop callers as opposed to necessarily the preflop raisers so all of that being said and explored i'm still totally happy with the check behind on the flop turn is a king check check to us and i decide to fire 425 total so obviously the specific king is important here since it does fill up the front door flush draw but with both players checking to us on the turn not as concerned about someone having a tremendous amount of flushes right this moment but it is live poker people end up doing weird things so it's definitely a possibility not writing it off entirely but i think at this point let's take a moment and run over to the solver and see what the solver suggests at this stage in the game all right so at this point after both players check to us i just like taking a general look at what the solver suggests and it thinks we should be checking here roughly 63 percent of the time with our entire range overall and betting roughly the other 37 and i also like looking at what it suggests the players in front of us do so notice that it has both of those players checking roughly 85 percent of the time i think that's very important to note when the solver says hey this is a spot where they should be firing often or firing not so often as is the case here a lot of checks from both players so anyway after after the both players check to us, let's look at our option with King Queen, King Queen of Spades specifically. And you'll notice that at this point, the solver likes checking it about 45 ish percent of the time, betting the other chunk. And you notice that the EV between the check and the bet slightly, slightly better for the bet overall. And personally, I am totally fine with firing this, obviously, like we did in this exact situation. I think my opponents are going to make massive, massive mistakes. And also keep in mind that this EV is based upon both players playing totally, totally perfect GTO poker from here on forward. And obviously that's not going to be the case at Live 1-2 or when there's humans in general, but it's important to know that's where that's all coming from. I think in real life, after we kind of explore the tree a little bit further, you know, are our opponents really raising properly? More importantly, are they really continuing properly, right? I don't think that our opponents are going to continue as tight as the overall solver would suggest, and every second best hand they continue with is better and better for us, and as such, I think going to be higher value overall. So I think this is definitely going to be a very, very standard situation to go for the fire. 25 or half pot should be totally, totally fine, and let's go for here so at this point the small blind decides to double check throws out a call fold from the big blinds wherever is the three of diamonds and our opponent decides to fire and I very, very quickly throw out the call. And let's see what the solver says at this stage in the game. So building out the rest of the tree from the turn, we bet player one called, player two folded, and onward to the river we go. And you notice that at this point, the solver does not really care for their fire. They should be checking this pretty much every single time. If we were gonna simplify this, we would just definitely make this a binary decision. And really they should be throwing all of their hands into a check. Unfortunately, they decided to fire. And one of the reasons why this can be very, very helpful when we're looking at a solver situation is saying okay like we are way off of the gto solve at this point and it's really helpful to understand when you're way outside of like, any solver model because then you can say okay like we're pretty much straight up in exploitative land and let's just approach the hand from there on forward again when we're looking at a gto model overall we want to understand what does the model suggest 
based upon perfect play from everyone. And then we can start saying, okay, well, how does that compare to the exploitative side of things? And based upon that, I'm looking at a situation where I'm getting a little bit better than four to one. I'm closing action. That's all well and good. I do have top pair of the great kicker and my opponent can have plenty of second best hands that we are going to do just, just fine against. Are we going to see heart sometimes? Sure. Are we going to see random two pair sometimes? Maybe. Are we going to see random stuff some chunk of the time? Busted flush draw and all that kind of fun stuff, or maybe even worse, King Axe, etc. Yeah, probably. So definitely going to be calling this and feeling quite, quite comfortable. End up showing my King Queen very quickly mux and ship the pot over our direction. No complaints whatsoever. So this is a great little result for us, but more importantly, it's nice to know that our play is in alignment with the solver. And again, having a multi-way solver to be able to look at situations like this is absolutely invaluable. And keep in mind, like the goal here is not to just blindly follow the solver or just memorize a tremendous amount of solver outputs and just blindly regurgitate them at the table. That's not at all what we're doing here. Rather, we're trying to look at the solver and say, okay, when does the solver really like firing a ton? When does it really like checking a ton? And these things that are kind of like half and half, it might be helpful to know a couple of them, but ultimately you're trying to find the simplifications and find the overall patterns that come out when you do this kind of solver exploration. Whether you're looking at heads up pots using a tool like say GTO plus or a multi-way pot using something like simple three-way. And if nothing else, it's nice at the end of the day to be able to look back at a hand, do a full analysis of it, run it through a solver and say, yep, I was definitely in the right ballpark or nope, the solver absolutely hates this like the solver absolutely hated our opponent's lead on the river in this exact situation. And by the way, if you're interested in doing this kind of multi-way solver exploration, I would definitely suggest picking up the simple three-way solver. You can use my link down in the description box below or just go to splitsuit.com slash simple three-way, no spaces, anything funky like that, you're automatically save 10% off your order. And it's really, really good. It's extremely simple to set up overall if you have any experience with solvers. And if you're brand new to solvers, I might suggest the GTO Plus bundle over at redshippoker.com. There is a complete training course involved in it that shows you how to use solvers, how to analyze the output itself. Very, very good if you're trying to get up to date on solvers very, very quickly. Start there for the heads up stuff, but for multi-way pots, again, simple three-way is extremely, extremely good. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions about anything related to this video, including multi-way solves, please do not hesitate to leave a comment down below. And of course, if you liked the video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated as well. I'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.